great talking to students. They've got open minds, They're uncluttered by prejudice and by, uh, by excessive wrong histories. Look, I hope that what they'll get out of talks like this is that they need to think about our foreign relationships in complex and holistic ways. They need to understand that if a country like us, a small country in population terms, covering a vast area, in a problematic part of the world, they need to have an understanding way beyond uh, that of previous generations. Well, it helps overcome my personal misery uh, because uh, I would kill to be in the United States now, just like I'd kill to be in the Australian Parliament now. But you, you get a sense of relevance from actually being able to impart something that you know to people who will, long after I'm dead, be the decision makers in this country. What I truly learned out of this experience is the importance that this alliance has, both defensive as well as economically. I've always been really interested in the world of politics and listening to Kim Beasley talk today really opened up my mind to some very contemporary ideas regarding Trump's America. It's not something you would read uh, in the media day to day, so that was one of the best aspects of the speech for me. The way in which he accurately and clearly exposed it to such a young audience as us I felt was truly extraordinary. We have this debate here in Australia at the moment about whether or not we ought to align ourselves with the United States, how deep that alignment might be and, and so on. But it's a, it's a very one-dimensional discussion. And as a result of that, I think that we have a problem in the way in which the alliance is viewed in this country and therefore threats to it, as so though there are equal choices around for us, or should we align with China, should we align with Britain, they're coming out, align with Japan, align with the US. All of that is essentially nonsense. Australia would be substantially indefensible without the United States. As the nuclear non-proliferation regime collapses, is we are part of the US extended deterrence system. Were we not part of the US extended deterrence system and a number of countries in this region went nuclear, we would have to go nuclear as well. So what you're talking about essentially is a defence budget three times the size of ours as it stands at the moment and the probable collapse of our health and education system to pay for it. That's one thing we've got at stake. The second is investment. Two thirds of global trade takes place in value chains. When this phone comes into the United States from China and it is valued at six or seven hundred dollars, that six or seven hundred dollars is put on China. In fact, 85% of the value of it goes to the United States. So Trump's obsessions with trade imbalances is a view of trade which is 30 or 40 years out of date. American investment in this country stands at $860 billion, the last time we took account, which is 2015. In that year, American investment grew at 80 billion. The total amount of Chinese investment is 75 billion. So American investment grows in Australia at the rate each year of total Chinese investment. Every single facet of the Australian economy has American investment in it. And so do we in the United States. Australian investment in the United States is 600 billion. We are linked to the American economy like this. And if you picked up the average paper for an analysis of Australian-American relations, you will never, ever see a mention of it. The one good thing about the situation we face with Trump, who is truly horrific, is that um, what I've been talking about to you at this point is barely affected. One thing does seem pretty likely. At the end of these four years, the United States, which already has a very powerful military, will have an even more powerful one. And that the American economy, which is now exceptionally strong, will probably, provided he doesn't completely muck up trade policy, provided he doesn't completely muck it up, the American economy will probably be stronger. The United States will emerge from the first four years of the Trump era 
an even more powerful country uh, than it is now. However, what will almost certainly emerge is a less influential one. And that is because Trump has abandoned the core component of the global American strategic position since World War II. Since World War II, it is American values that have underpinned the rules-based arrangements for relations in nat between nations. And that goes for the UN, the IMF, the World Trade Organization, the trade agreements, all of these things were based around liberal principles stressing freedom and respect for sovereignty. And Trump's position is those standards do not matter a damn. As far as he is concerned, those have been standards put in place to destroy American competitiveness. And the era of those standards destroying American competitiveness, he says, are over. And so what he will be doing with trade in the future will be strict reciprocity. What he does in military terms will be, what have you done for me lately? The sorts of things of leadership that was there originally from Obama in things like global climate change is his position is who gives a damn. The, uh, the United States is not going isolationist. The United States is going unilateralist. And that is a very different concept. Yeah.